not yet. I just done it in the first video. I don't know how long it was, but I felt it was going on for a while. So this is step two now. In the garden studio. Oh, I had a sudden stomach lurch there as I thought. I should be one of my old shoulds. I should be doing the newsletter. So you heard it here first now instead of recrimination because I love painting and I want to paint every day. Instead of that, what I'm going to do is say that once this painting is done, and you're a witness to this now, once this painting is done, I get to go to Costa and do my newsletter. But first I probably, yeah, so once this painting is done, I get to go upstairs, have a shower, change my clothes, and then go to Costa. And I get to write the newsletter. I was saying this to Erin yesterday, she said, Mum, it's a bit annoying, I, I get to, she didn't say it's annoying, she just said, you know, she was just suggesting that I consider how I would feel after doing something, rather than pretend that I'm going to enjoy doing it. I do, like most of the time, I do enjoy writing my newsletter, especially enjoy it when, when it's going well and when I feel like I'm flowing easily and, and actually something that gets me there with it is to write the shitty first draft. And to give myself a dedicated time, like I've given myself today an hour and a half. Um, that's my plan in Costa. With, it, there's a lovely view overlooking the Pentland Hills there. And I'm going to write my newsletter in there. That's my plan. I forget what, I was, what my point was there now. I had some point to make. Does there have to always be a point on you? I s seem to feel like there does. That's my answer. <clears throat> I love this pot. And it's not at all like expensive or anything. I think it was only a pound in a Salvation Army shop in Edinburgh. Maybe six or seven years ago I bought it. And it's just um, kind of unassuming. And uh, I love it. I wonder where it came from. I wonder who made it and how it ended up in the second hand shop. If that person is still with us or if they may be looking at me now from beyond, wherever beyond is, and saying, ah, it's nice to see it being used again. I hope that's the case. Anyway, right, so this is, yeah, that's that. It's an interesting thing I'm doing today, isn't it? I mean, here I go, I the small brush and a kind of, as I say, methodical approach. You know, yellow ochre might be the colour to describe the inside, where it's a little bit darker. My feeling is it's even darker than yellow ochre. But this is satisfying enough at the moment. I mean, I could always put a bit of brown into it to make it darker again. There's a few staggery petals that are coming towards me there that are um, slightly tricky to describe with two yellows. But we'll see now. I mightn't even need to put them in. I might get away with the viewer sticking them in on their own without me having to paint them. You know, sometimes you can fill the gaps in, can't you? When you look at a painting. Oh, the sun is so beautiful. Oh my God. I was saying that to the lady I met walking. The lady, who, well, if you watched the last video, I was saying I went for a walk today in the woods and I met a lady who started, she's she's a kind of a um, fitness instructor or something like that. Health and fitness kind of to do with the menopause but one of the things that she was saying was about light she's from the southwest of france i'm from the south of ireland and actually april being sunny is the most glorious gift oh my god like i cut the grass and tidied out the studio got all these lovely flowers to paint that happened because of the workshop too but there's, I think there's a new lease of life that happens when the sun begins to shine with warmth. 
and when it begins to hit the studio like it's only recently that it start, started to reach as far back as the studio so I'm fierce grateful for that my god and she was saying the same she said you know she really recognises but she said too that there was something what I was going to say she really recognises the effect that the brightness or lack of it has on us but then she said in Finland apparently they had the highest suicide rate for a while there and there was an idea that it, it might have been because or caused by the might have been caused by the lack of light but she said in the last no did she say 10 years or something it has totally shifted and it's no longer there's no longer high rates of suicide you know people have really become happier in Finland apparently I don't know how they gauge it, but anyway, I suppose they're not, at least they're not killing themselves. And um, she was saying that maybe it's because, like, um, the interior space is made more comfortable, you know, that they're maybe working harder to kind of create nice spaces for themselves for the long winters. Nice spaces for themselves to occupy that are cosy and inspiring and... I think that makes sense. I hope I didn't upset anybody with me talk about suicide there. It's quite a, you can be quite close to the bone, can't it? Hmm, all this stuff. Just trying to locate the petition now. What's that petal there? Actually, in a way, one of the things that I, that I find helpful, I think I was writing, I was talking in the earlier email, in, email, I was talking in the other video, the earlier video of this one, about things that helped me to feel better. Because I was saying, well, today wasn't the worst morning ever. It wasn't the best morning ever either. I had higher hopes for it, which is probably the complete reason that it wasn't better because my expectations sure far away to feel shite if you have expectations upon yourself that are unrealized even if they're realized you have more, pr more pressure then for the next time anyway what was I saying oh yeah so um, I was saying that I wrote out a little page of things that helped me when that happens because I thought it would be helpful for me for another time things that help things that don't help and um at the, there comes a point where it can be really helpful to investigate and actually acknowledge that the feeling is there and you know really seek it out find what the feeling is and where it is in the body experience most clearly I do a tarot block meditation called RAIN the RAIN meditation recognize, allow, investigate, nurture I kind of do it on my own sometimes if I, if I feel that sensation is happening I kind of investigate where in the body do I feel this uh, feeling of depression or low low mood or whatever and then anyway so what was I saying that for now oh yeah so I had my list of things that kind of help sometimes things that sometimes help and I think Matt Haig in his book the comfort book has um, written a list of things that sometimes help him anyway he was on my list today because I recognise that one of the things that he suggested in the book Reasons to Stay Alive um, is to find something beautiful in every moment, I think he says, but really just to look around you and find something beautiful, no matter what it is. The focus on looking for something beautiful means that you're already on a winner level. And I did that in the field today and it's great. I found a couple of lovely little daffodils nodding away and a big puffy cloud in the midst of lots of austere looking ones. There was a white puffy one just taking centre stage quite happily. Anyway, there's a number of things. Obviously there's loads out in the field there in nature. Loads to find, but I find that even in the middle of a city I can do that exercise because you can see 
a beautiful smile or a beautiful building or do you know no or even a beautiful colour paint or whatever it is. That was one of the things that I found that I wrote as being a helpful thing. She said, I'm really am I really plastering this? What do you think? I found her making an awful dog's dinner, as they say. Um, I won't I won't condemn myself for I'm just gonna do it. It's it is what it is. Isn't that it? It is what it is. And it's very good for me this now doing this. Permanent rose is a nice colour. It's a nice colour for this because it is it is the colour of these flowers. I think these flowers are still called gerbera. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think they are gerbera as well as the orange ones that I do. such a pleasing thing sitting here <laughs> on top of my furry hot water bottle because don't let the sunshine fool you there's an east wind that's chilly it feels east anyway I don't know what direction it's from but it, you know how they say there's an east wind it feels like that's what this is so um despite the gorgeous sunshine I'm needing a warm I'm wrapped in a blanket and am I no I left my blanket inside I've got my long cardigan around me <clears throat> this fluorescent ink is the business for capturing some of those really bright bits without too much ado now where am I going next I wonder I suppose will I carry on down I feel like I should get myself a bigger brush and snap out of the Will I snap out or will I just let myself do whatever it is I want to do? Oh, I think the latter is called for today. I see a leaf green in my bag there. And that leaf green now will be a nice shortcut along with sap green and a few other things in here. My leaf green will be just the colour to describe number one, the grass that's out there, bright and cheerful, beyond my page. And number two, to describe these greenish kind of flowery things. Or to go some way to describe them anyway. It's kind of a gearish green, but it, it, with some cadmium yellow in it. Or even maybe just spread out on the white. We'll see. We'll do something with it anyway. It seems like I'm sticking with this little brush. It's just because I've only got my watercolour brushes here and I want to keep them... I, want, I don't want them to be get ruined, like... Okay. I don't want the watercolour brushes to get ruined with the acrylic. So I'm not going to use more than this one, I don't think. I mean, I'm, I'll give it a good wash after. It's not a big deal. Because actually, these ones aren't that expensive anyway. Not cheap as I, I keep meaning to say to the, <coughs> to the Schoolhouse for Art in Dublin to change the equipment list because it says that I'll bring over brushes when I come. And actually, it's easier for them to get them themselves when I come over for the workshop, you know. I don't think I've ever yet bought over a brush and people... Sometimes think that I'm going to have them and I don't, and that's all. So I better tell them. <coughs> the grass now outside. I just fancy that transition between bright pink. <coughs> and it's not exactly bright green, but <coughs> that there was. Gets a bit more callo blue down here now. To close one eye. Whatever is there anyway is still lighter than the pink. I'll just let the grass <coughs> end all on its own. I don't want to start painting the full lawn. I've already cut the full lawn. No, what about this carry on up here? What colour is that?
It might be that there's a bit of blue green underneath. And then could maybe do some of the yellow green over it. <coughs> and I wonder about the purple then. Is there purple in the bag? And there is. There is a dark purple in my bag. Do you think now that what I'm doing here taking so long and being so slow about it is that I'm sabotaging myself from going and writing a newsletter? Do you think that's maybe what I'm doing? Because I have a scepticism around it myself. A slight scepticism. But I know better than to be fighting against myself, surely be to God. But <clears throat> would think at this stage now oh that's one of the things that Chris Westfall says in his book easier he says two words to eliminate I should have done it by now by now in fact the whole thing I should have but by now he was saying to eliminate those words <coughs> anyway forget, forget all of that now what am I doing I'm trying to explain this purple and I've mixed it with tallow blue in order to get a slightly more bluish purple when mixed with the white paper I'm hoping that it'll um, get me there quickly for those flowers remember yesterday I stuck on some collage for them I think I might do that too today maybe but I'll just um, I'll just keep going with this well, I've got it on my fingers now. I think there's a bit more blue in that now than I've put in it. There's a little purple one sticking out there too, in front of the green grass. Sugar happy with aren't I? Maybe another couple of bits out there. I mean those flowers aren't actually that colour at all really. We don't have a purple purple I think. When it's dry I can always put more purple in there. I have a light purple too somewhere. happy with the decision to put the alcohol ink there so I'll use this for the collage
find my glue there. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I just don't, I don't feel like that's really what's happening there. It's actually quite a bright section. Quite a purple section anyway. Seems I've got the paper and the glue. Might as well stick some more here too, I think. That one extending down, I think could have done maybe with a bit more volume. Oh, I'm quite happy here now, to be honest with you. It feels good. This feels good. Mm. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Those of you, my God, you, you darling souls who actually, if you are still here with me, or maybe you just dipped in and this is the bit that you've landed at. Because I very rarely, I imagine that very rarely can people sit through the whole lot. Like I've been doing an online landscape course recently, you know, and I think the videos that I send to them, because I don't do editing really myself like some of the videos now i have done professionally edited and everything but others um they're so long and all kinds of things going on like i just think that um yeah i don't i don't know if they're really kind of watchable but i think then again Maybe what I would do now, I'd say, if I was listening to them, is I might paint alongside as I was listening. Because I feel that's what I'm doing with you here, is having a conversation with you, as though you're sitting at the table beside me here. And that is what keeps um, the motor running a bit for me as well. Like, And I'm also kind of half keen to hear what's going on with me. And through talking it out, um, through talking with she, I somehow kind of arrive at what's happening for me a bit where I mightn't if I was left to my own devices right, I'm taking the back off this so that it's a thinner piece of collage and I want to put that on somewhere too I think I don't know if I'm going to put the whole lot on maybe there Anyway. Well, the, the taking off the paper has kind of made it, made it thinner. It's also feathered up the cardboard that it was painted on. So it's got a bit of a fluffy back to it now. So we could press it down to get it really flush with the surface. And I don't know if I'm going to tear this into a couple of bits. Or do I want it to be one bit on its own? There, I'll leave it one bit and see. Okay, she's got a fire going next door. I love the smell of an open fire. This is kind of different altogether to, to the approach painting the gerbera, isn't it? That's kind of nice for me to have a bit of a let up. Although I really did enjoy doing those gerbera taking all that time over them. It's kind of nice too, having the freedom now to just um, lay the colour on with uh, collage and finger tips again. And those two blousy 
things need to be explained too, don't they? I wonder if I was to mix these two colors together. I think I need some white with them. Lo and behold, here is some white. My goodness. I wonder now if maybe some fingerprints might do the job there. I don't know if it really matters um, that under there is darker. I think I could, I could still just give it a value that's a bit darker than the white paper anyway so that it's not fighting with things. I don't want it to be the same colour as the jug. And it's a kind of a dull, nondescript kind of a shade really so if I mix the brown and blue together a bit more blue. And I suppose I could kind of create the shapes that I'm seeing. At least there's a triangle in between those two. Those two flowers there. Those two petals. And that petal is longer. And then there's a slightly shorter one and another dark triangle in here. And then a dark bit right here. Which actually is a stem. Like that. And there's another stem that's kind of sticking up over there somewhere. And one here. And some slightly lighter versions of the same greyish colour. And then there's also some purple. Dull purple in there too. There's a flower in between the two. And next now I want to do the, the band around here. I often quite like deciding how can I make that. Maybe before I do, I paint the bottom half, which feels to me to be similar to the top one and maybe has a touch more yellow ochreish thing going on. I mean, there's a reflected light from the table and everything going on here, so I'm kind of simplifying down really what I'm seeing. I might even stick on some of that tissue paper for the tabletop, because I'm definitely not going to be drawing those words. Now, the best way I've found to describe the texture of this is by using my hand to print. Um, might be a little bit lighter but actually instead of making it lighter below what I'm going to do is lessen the contrast there by putting some white paint there with the same texture and now all I need to do is find a bit of blue to go in the middle I think it might be Maybe cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of purple. It's not, it's not unlike the um, color, is it, of the flowers themselves, really. A kind of a blue, a warmish blue. So I might start with purple and put a little bit of cerulean into the mix. So that we're getting a blue that's um, warmer in tone. And then we'll see what happens when I put white into that. Maybe it need, needs a little bit more of the purple, let's say. I don't know. That's quite close, isn't it? It gets darker, of course, towards the shadows there. A bit 
think it is. There was water in that pile of paint. Yeah, it gets a little bit darker over there. put them white there so that I can later put on a bit more of the fluorescent ink onto those bits because there's some bits here that need to be made brighter with the sun with the sun that's meeting them and the grass there too now what about the tabletop Lovely and bright, isn't it? I wonder what'll I do about the tabletop now. Anyway, maybe I'll just give myself a break so I can carry on with the plan for the neon ink there. I think it's okay that the white is still a little bit wet. Do you think now? Will I tear off a touch of this? I think so. That feels like joy to me. That table. It's not a tablecloth, actually. It's um. It's um, wrapping paper. I was going to put it upside down, but I want the butterflies flying up the way, so I'm going to turn it this way. I might want to put a bit of water into the PVA glue now because this is actually very thin tissue paper. Well, it's not very thin tissue paper, it's just tissue paper and by its nature that's thin. So I think it doesn't need an awful lot of paste to stay down. And I like putting it on that side. I like that nice edge on, on its own. I kind of like the, the broken edge there. So maybe I can move the... Um, There. Maybe I can move this somewhere else. I'm doing a wee video there. You can talk away though, it's grand. Maybe I don't want to turn them upside down. Almost finished, and I've been doing it for a lot longer than I planned. The battery's low, and I couldn't get the microphone working, so I don't know if people have been able to hear me at all. I hope so because I put the microphone on this side. I'm just lifting out that now. Yeah, the sun is shining out there, isn't it?
another palette for the glue. Maybe it is better on that side. trouble deciding. I wonder if it might be part of my self-sabotaging moves. Because if I decide on a tabletop, that's the pièce de résistance, and it's the end of my painting. And then I need to follow through on what I set myself up to do next. Or maybe that's it. We're funny creatures, aren't we? Let's say it again. I'm not sure if that's it. Maybe I could give myself the benefit of the doubt and just say that I'm just... <coughs> Simply being discerning. At this stage in the painting, it's worth being discerning. No thanks. I had quite a lot of tea today. I brought my teapot with me. Tea cozy. And we came and had breakfast here. Is this your lunch break, Erin? No, I had lunch. It just go. What time is it now? Half two. Ah. Remember, I've, uh, we made eggs, by the way. Oh, yeah. We had eggs. I thought maybe you were going to say it was half four and I was going to get all worried thinking you might go out the whole day's time. That's nice. Thank you. Thanks. I'm wondering whether to put collage on for the tabletop or not. It is the actual tabletop, like. What? Oh. <laughs> What do you think? I don't know no. if I want to put it everywhere. No. You wouldn't put it anywhere? No, I like it like that. Yeah, but when you see that... Okay. Maybe if I just get some of that colour... <laughs> <You're gonna, laughs> you want to do it. I want your opinion. Okay. No, I don't. I'll let you know you won't do it. No, I think you should do it then. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I know. Okay. I think I, I, like, just... I like it both ways, but I don't really mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It might just be a step too far. If I can make the colour. I have a link that was that colour, you know. It's mostly cerulean blue, really. The thing is, it's a lot lighter than the background. It's a lot, sorry, a lot lighter than the pot is there. And on this side, I think it's about the same tone almost. So what I might do is do a bit of a compromise here now. I might let it be just cerulean blue water done on this side. Maybe on the other side. Put a little bit of that paper on.
Ooh, look, the um, joy of that pattern of butterflies and birds and that blue colour is lovely. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little touch of it there too, but I'll take off the hard edge there. about that bird being what about that bird being there? Nope. Still no. Still no. The final move now will be a little bit of a little bit of white into this cerulean blue, made nice and thick, and painted over this edge. Easy stuff. <coughs> Bit of a half hearted request. <coughs> Yeah, I'm not convinced about the tabletop. But it's been fun experimenting with it, pushing and pulling that. 
And I think just as a final move now, I might re-establish the edge of the vase with a bit of clarity. Pen's grey, next week blue and some yellow ochre. There's a thing called parallel play tomorrow where I, where I join the Zoom meeting with others and we together work for an hour and a half on our own projects and we report back at the end of the hour and a half to say what we've done in that time. And I was going to leave my newsletter until then, but I want to join my friend sketching tomorrow. So I'm going to challenge myself to do the parallel play without having others present. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the cafe and for an hour and a half, I'm going to work on the newsletter. And I'll just make myself, oh, no, I won't just make myself. I'll do a first draft, enjoy it, <laughs> and uh, see what happens after that. Then I'll just see what happens. No major pressure is there. I can always do it tomorrow. I just, I do want, you know, I suppose if I was to say, you know, the thing about discipline being what you want, being simply being remembering what you really want, then um, then what I really want is to be able to go sketching freely with my friends tomorrow and to have communicated with everybody on the newsletter about, you know, and, to, and what I really want is to do that on time so that it's there for my friend to put together, as I said it would be on Thursday. So I can feel there's some resistance in me. So this is a kind of a growth edge for me now, this thing of setting myself up on my own to do something, not having to have someone else dictate to me. This is a bit of a challenge to keep to my own guidelines, really. So let's see if I'll do it. Anyway, I think this painting is finished, guys. This painting is finished for now. That's what I did. And um, with your presence, thank you for joining me. I had a very nice time talking to you, whether you could hear me or not. I'm very sorry if you couldn't. Um, but it's been a pleasure being with these beautiful flowers and being with you for this time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.